Good morning and welcome. I'm glad you could join us for worship. In trying times, it seems that the phrase, you got to have faith, pops up often. In our gospel this morning, we see the disciples locked in a room by themselves for fear of the Jews. It's the resurrected Jesus who comes to them and says, peace be with you. Now, this morning, we're going to delve in a couple of questions about faith. We're going to ask, what is faith and from where does it come? I'm so glad that you joined us for worship this morning. As we declare together, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our opening hymn is Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. It's number 465. We make our beginning in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise, Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. 
Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Let's go to God our Father to admit the times we failed him and to ask for forgiveness. Father in heaven, we confess to you our sinfulness and our unworthiness to stand before you. We have done wrong by disobeying you and your plan for our lives. We confess also our failure to do the good you want us to do. Forgive us for, the, for Jesus' sake, and with your spirit, renew us to live our lives in praise and glory to you. Know this. God has heard your prayer of forgi for forgiveness, and his answer to you in Christ Jesus is forgiveness. Because of the work of God's Son, let your hearts be at peace. As a called and ordained servant of the word and pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church, it is my joy to announce, the for announce to you the forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our hymn of thanks, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. It's number 477. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in a locked room in Jerusalem, you appeared to your disciples and gave them faith and peace. In your word, grant us faith and peace, that our hearts reflect your grace. We pray this in your name, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 5. 
Peter and the other disciples replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed. All his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly Psalm 148. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. Our epistle reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from death. This is what fills us with a living hope. And so we look forward to the possessing to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. He keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. They are for you, who through faith are kept safe by God's power, for the salvation which is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many kinds of trials you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, which can be destroyed, is tested by fire. And so your faith, which is much more than precious gold, must also be tested so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. You love him, although you have not seen him, and you believe in him, although you do not see him now. So rejoice with a great and glorious joy, which words cannot express, because you are receiving the salvation of your souls, which is the purpose of your faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia. Our gospel is taken from the gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, He showed them his hands and side. 
The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails, where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the hymn of the day, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. It's number 461.
what are some of the best gifts you've ever been given? Or maybe what's some of the best gifts you've given? Maybe it's a Christmas gift that makes a kid jump and shout. Maybe, maybe it's a ring that makes your girlfriend cry. Maybe it's dropping off the keys to someone for a brand new vehicle. This afternoon, we take a deep look at faith, where it comes from and what it is. And with all this comes the realization of a wonderful gift from God. Let's begin with our reading. It's from John chapter 20, verse 19. On that evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Now that's interesting. I'd like to stop right there. Because at this point, Jesus had appeared to Mary. And at this point, Some of the disciples had gone to the tomb and saw that it was empty, that the stone was rolled away. But here we see them locked in a room, being afraid of the Jewish leaders. We continue. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and and his side. And the disciples, and I would be too, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. You know, being locked in the room and, and being afraid of the Jews, that's, that's what we naturally do. We, we don't naturally have faith in Christ. We don't naturally think he's risen from the dead. In fact, we naturally do the opposite. That leads us to ask of this faith that they have, that they now have, where does this faith come from? Let's turn to the Apostle Paul for answers. The first thing uh, I'd like to do is just uh, read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. He's he's writing this letter to answer some questions of the Thessalonians about when Christ's return will happen. It's probably the oldest book, the oldest letter in the New Testament, written around A.D. 50. Paul writes this. He says, we must thank God at all times for you, friends, you whom the Lord loves. Now listen to this. For God chose you as the first to be saved by the Spirit's power to make you his holy people and by the faith in the truth. God called you to this through the good news we preach to you. He called you to possess your share of the the glory of our Lord Jesus. So, So we can glean a couple things from this. He says, God chose you as the first to be saved by the Spirit's power. So faith comes from the Holy Spirit. How does it come? He says, God called you to this through the good news. So it comes by hearing the word of God. So faith comes from the Holy Spirit by hearing the word of God. Now listen to what Paul writes to the Ephesians on chapter 2. This is is almost like a sermon he's giving them, and he's written it from Prison. The purpose of the letter is to stress to them that all Christians are on equal terms. We are all one in Christ. But listen to what he writes in chapter 2. It's verses 8 and 9. For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. Now listen to this. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. Faith is a gift from God, 
That's the gift that Jesus gave the disciples right then. It says that Jesus comes, he stands right among them. You see, the disciples couldn't go to him. He had to go to them and give them this gift. Where would they go? Where would they find Jesus? He had to find them. And he had to give them the gift of faith. It was this Jesus who sent the Holy Spirit. In verse 22, it says, And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. It's with that faith that that he told them of their mission. He told them of the peace of God. Our situations is much like the disciples in that locked room. We naturally are locked in a room of sin and try as we may, we can't get out. Finally, one day we wake up and we see there's a wrapped present on the floor and it, and it has a little tag on it and it says, from me, your father. I sent this by the spirit because I love you. We open the present and inside is a key, a key that lets us out. This key is faith. This is the key that unlocks the door to a new life with the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. It's that key that is given to us as a gift. Now let's go on to the next part of our scripture, our gospel reading this morning. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. (laughs) What's his reaction? It says, He tells them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas could not believe on his own. His strong words in this verse, basically he's telling the disciples, prove it. You say Jesus has risen, prove it. He said, I won't believe unless I touch Jesus myself. Thomas lacked something, and that is faith. It goes on in verse 26. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he looks right to Thomas and he says, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And I love what Thomas says back to him. He says, my Lord and my God. What is this new faith that Thomas has? What what is faith? Let's start with what isn't faith. (laughs) So let's start with the other direction. What What isn't faith? Faith is not a general belief that God exists. That's not faith. Listen to James chapter 2, verse 19. Do you believe that there is only one God? Good. The demons also believe and tremble in fear. Faith isn't just simply believing that there is a God out there somewhere. Even the demons know there is a God. And faith is also not knowing the historical facts about Jesus and the gospel. You can be a Bible historian and not be a Christian. Faith is not something that we make ourselves. Listen to Paul's letter to the Romans chapter five. He says, he writes, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. When we're utterly helpless, that means we can't do things for ourselves. We don't make our own faith. So what 
is faith then? If that's what faith isn't, well, then what is faith? Faith is the gift of God in which we not only know about him, yes, we do need to know about him, but also believe and trust in him. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Again, Jesus comes to the disciples. He appeared to them. He took Thomas's hand and he showed him his hands. He showed him his side. Thomas couldn't come to Jesus. Jesus came to him to give him faith. This belief, this trust in Jesus. And Thomas's reply was, that faith, my, my Lord and my God. If you have a serious illness and you're in the hospital and maybe you've been in this situation, the doctor may come and talk to you and maybe you know, lay down what's actually on the line for you. Let's say he finds some medicine that would actually help. He talks about the history of the medicine. He talks about where it's made, what company does it. But talking about it, knowing about this medicine, is not the same as taking the medicine and trusting that it will work. That's that faith, that trust that it will actually happen. Let's finish with the last two verses of our reading. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. And here's a very famous verse. It's a good one to memorize. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. You see, this gift of faith isn't just given to Jesus' disciples so long ago. Or when he reappeared to, with them, with Thomas there, even letting Thomas touch his hands and his side. You see, this gift of faith is a gift to you. Jesus appears to you this morning in his word. The Holy Spirit is working in your heart today to hear the gospel, to bring you to faith to him. And through faith in his resurrection, to forgiveness and eternal life. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue by confessing our faith together as brothers and sisters in Christ will be using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. We pray today for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all those in the world who have not yet come to know him. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray today for all the church around the world and all those who call upon your name. May they all know firmly the love you have for them. 
in the security of your love, may we reach out to our neighbors and give of our love openly, openly and freely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, as you walked in the midst of your creation, you witnessed the grief and the pain that sin has brought upon your people. Many people suffer in body, mind, and spirit with diseases, injuries, addictions, anxiety, and depression. In love and mercy, comfort them with reassurance of your presence and your grace, strengthened and heal according to your will. This morning, we lift up to you Amy Schroeder, Austin Ortiz, Bill Haig, Cami Hafner, Charlie Martin, Charles Mosier, Dave Dostal, Delvin Librant, Doug Remington, Elaine Brannon, John Carter, Joyce Jones, Judy Huxel, Julie Fitzke, Karen Varenault, Kevin Lockhart, Chris Nelson, Lori Drews, Marv Colson, Maxine Hilker, Sandy Sowards, Sharon Painter, Terry Perks, and the Zissett family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have revealed your selfless love to us by sending your son to be our savior. His sacrifice out of love gives us new life. We see examples of sacrificial love in our world, and we thank you for all who serve in such a way as to be a blessing to others. Be with and bless all law enforcement uh, personnel, hospitals, doctors, and staff, and ambulance crews, with all who serve in our fire department. Sustain them in their work and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have appointed for us leaders to govern our society. In this time of pandemic, grant them wisdom and guidance to make wise and just decisions that are pleasing in your sight. Bless Mayor David Gunderson, State Senator Dan Hughes, Governor Pete Ricketts, Senators Deb Fisher and Ben Sass, Representative Adrian Smith, and President Donald Trump. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust all for whom we pray. In, and we trust them into your care, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We finish our, our service with the hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. It's number 474.
I would like everyone to join us for a worship service this afternoon at two o'clock here at the in the parking lot at St. Paul's. Uh, so the, come on over and uh, we'll worship together. Everyone is invited. Also, uh, uh, I'd like to direct everyone to our Facebook page. Uh, in, in it is daily Bible studies and, and encouraging words. We're going through the book of Esther right now. So go ahead and join us. Uh, each Bible study takes maybe five to 10 minutes and we can be together every day in God's word. Otherwise, have a wonderful week. Enjoy the better weather and uh, God's blessings to you.